Okay, so we are with the second session of the similar past paper. That's for double two one zero two two October November two thousand twenty three. Now it says question number six. The flowchart represents an algorithm that performs a process on groups of values that are input. The algorithm will fail if the first value of any group is zero. So the flowchart is over there that is allowing a group of the values to be input and they are saying that the flowchart will hold or will end if the first uh, if the first value of the group that is going to be entered is zero. So they are saying an input of minus min will terminate. Okay, sorry. The algorithm will fail. It's not going to end. Sorry, my bad. The algorithm will fail if the first value of any group is zero and they are saying the algorithm will terminate if a value of minus one is entered. Now they are saying at start, just after the start, total is assigned with the value zero. Count is assigned with the value zero. We do have an input value, is value equals to zero. If it's a yes, so average will be provided with a total uh, divided by the count. Output total is uh, total, whatever the total is. Then output average is average. And again, we will be assigning the initial values because they haven't said that uh, uh, they haven't said that uh, the program will halt if it's a zero. They said the algorithm will fail. Okay, just after that, they are saying is value equals to minus one. If it's a yes, so uh, they will, uh, they, it will be in a stop. If it's a no, so total will be provided the value total plus value and count will be provided the value count plus one and repeating itself. Okay, so here we are. Now they are saying complete the trace tables for the input data. So we do have an input data and we need to complete the trace table for this one. Okay. Now starting with the values, total and count will provide with the initial values or they will initialize at the value zero. So we will be writing zeros over here. Now, just after that, the loop is going to start. So they are saying input a value. So what is the value? The value is 25. So that will be input with 25 right over here. Okay, just after the input value, they are saying its value equals to zero. So it's a no right now. They are saying its value equals to minus one. Again, it's a no right now. Total will be provided total plus value. So the initial value for total was zero. So total plus value will give you a value of 25 once again. Then they are saying count will be provided with the value count plus one. So it will be a one right now because the last value was zero. Repeating the loop. Input value. Now, what is the input value? Let's see. It's 35. So we just place 35 beneath 25. Now they are saying is value equals to zero. It's a no. Is value equals to minus one. Again, it's a no. So total will be provided the value total plus value. So 35 plus 25 will make up a 60 this time. Then we do have a count will be provided with value count plus one, two. The loop repeats itself, input value. Now the value is three right now. So now we will have a check once again, is value equals to zero, it's a no. Is value equals to minus one, again it's a no. Now total is provided with the value total plus value and count is provided with the value count plus one. So it will be a 63 right over here, it will be a three. The loop repeats once again, they ask us to input the value. This time it's a zero. This time it's a zero. Now what we need to do is value equals to zero. Yes, it is equals to zero this time. So they are saying average is provided value total divided by the count. So what is the value of the total right now? It is 63. What is the value of the count? It is uh, three. So 63 divided by three will give you the value for the average this time as 21. Okay, just after that, Uh, they are saying output total is and the va value stored in the variable total. So we will be writing in the similar manner. Total is 63. The value is stored over here. Then they are saying average is the value stored in the variable average. So average is 21. Now they are saying repeat yourself. And once we are going to repeat this out, so the values of the total and count are initialized to zero once again. So we do have a zero for the total. We do have a zero for the count. Now, just after that, they are saying 
input the values. So once we are going to input the values, so sorry, a value. So now it's 57 this time. Now, once we have entered 57, so they are saying is value equals to zero. It's a no. Is value equals to minus one? No. Total will be provided with value total plus value and count will be provided with value count plus one. So 50 plus zero this time because the updated value of total is zero. So 57 once again and count, sorry, count plus one. So the last value of count is zero. So now it is one over here. Again, the loop repeats itself. And this time the number is 20. Just after that, they ask us that is value equals to zero. No, it's value equals to minus one. So now total and count are going to update themselves. So 57 plus 20 will make up a 77. Count will be incremented by one. So it will make up a two. Again, they ask us to input the value. This time it's 25. So once we have entered the value 25, they will be asking that is value equals to zero? No, is value equals to minus one? Again, it's a no. Now they are saying total and the value for the count will update themselves. So 25 plus 77 will give you a 102. Increment uh, in the count that will give you a three. Again, they ask us to, as the loop repeats itself, so they will be asking you to enter the value of, uh, enter the value. So just out of 25, we do have 18 over here. Now they will ask you that is value equals to zero? No, is value equals to minus one? No, just after that total and count are going to update themselves. So the value for total this time will be 120 and the value for count will be four this time. Okay, now as the answer is the loop repeats itself. So the value this time that is going to be entered is zero over here. So once you have put the zero, they are saying is value equals to zero. Yes, it is zero. So the, now you need to calculate the average that is total divided by the count. So what is the value of the total we are having? That is 120 that will be done with or that will be divided by the four. So once you are going to divide 120 by four will give you the value for 30. Okay, now once you have calculated the value for the average, it says output total is. So we'll be writing total is right now is 120. So total is 120. Just after that, they are going to ask you about the average. So average is what was the average? Average is this time 30. So we will be writing over here. Average is 30. Okay, just after that, they are saying, now again, assign the values for the total and count as zero. Okay, now total and count are assigned with the zeros once again. Now, just after that, they are saying to input a value. Okay, now the input value is minus one. Do remember they told us that the loop is gonna terminate when it will be a minus one. So let's see how they're going to do it. Is value equals to zero? It's a no. Is value equals to minus one? So it's a stop. A stop means we do not need to output any sort of the thing. So it's a stop over here. That's all for this question. Now they are saying describe the purpose of the algorithm. So what is the purpose of the algorithm? So they are saying uh, the purpose was something if you can see over here to add them together and to average the values of per batch output and average the values of per batch and uh, the loop uh, will execute oh sorry the loop will terminate if it's a minus one so you can say to add and calculate average of one batch and restart over a value of zero and minus one will, sorry, will stop or terminate the program. So this was the purpose of this flow chart. Actually, the purpose of the flow chart was to calculate and add the average and the total. Okay, now question number seven, what does the question number seven says? Now the question number seven says, a string operation, substring. Substring 
is with quote start number returns a string from quote being at position start that is number characters law okay so sub string is somewhat similar to the mid string so how we do calculate the mid string or we can just i can just explain you the sub string first of all so quote whatever is stored in the variable quote starting from the start position whatever the number is provided with the start position and how many characters should be output that is stored in the numbers over here characters long that how many numbers should be output so characters long the first character in the code is in position number one so they are also assigned with the index values now they are saying write pseudo code statement two store the string learn never exhaust the mind in code okay the first thing we need to do extract and display the word the mind from the string output the original string in the lower case now how we need to do it so first thing they are going to say that you need to store or basically you need to assign learning never exhaust the mind in code i hope so you guys implement over this as well so code assign with a value learning okay do remember it's a string so it will be in the double inverted commas learning never exhaust the mind okay we have assigned this value right now just after that okay now one purpose is done the for one purpose of this flow chart is done now now they are saying extract and display the words the mind from the string okay now how do we need to extract that so we need to extract that with the help of the substring so we have assigned the value for the substring we have assigned the value to the code but we haven't assigned the value to the start and the number so we know that we need to start from the word t and we need to have how many words we need to have two words that is the mind so i told you that start will have the value from where we need to start okay now where we need to start one two because they already said to us that the index value or the first letter of the string is on index value one so one two three four five six seven eight the gap will be counted as the string value as well so or index value as well nine then 10 11 12 13 14 15 at the gap 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, and 24 at the gap. So we need to extract the mind. So the first letter of the, of the string that should be uh, extracted, T is on 25th character. So we will be assigning the value start as 25. And how many characters we need to have an output? So one, two, three for the the gap four then five six seven and eight so eight character in all so number that means how many or how long the string should be output so these are eight characters so it has been assigned with a value eight now they are saying extract and display the words the mind from the string output the original string in the lower case okay now we need to take it as an output first of all so we are going to write it down output just after the output we need to sorry we need to utilize this substring so we are writing it down substring okay from the substring quote has been assigned with a value start assigned with a value number assigned with the value already so that will automatically give you an output and they also said output the original string in the lower case okay do remember that the output l case for the lower case right over here and the code so this will be as in lower case so this will convert the string into the lower case so once you need to have a service string and then the original string, the original string was learning never exhaust the mind. So the mind is being output by this statement and learning never exhaust the mind is output by this statement. But 
in the lower case it has been output in the lower case now okay just after that we do have question number eight what does it say explain why programmer would use procedures and parameters when writing a program okay do remember that procedures are basically utilized so that we can have a modular form of the program so uh, so if we are going to make any changes to any of the module that may not affect the other module first of all uh, the other benefit could be that we can call that particular module into other modules as many time as we want to so that could be uh, the benefit as well and uh, the repetition will be shorter over there it won't make the program long or it won't make the program hectic for us so these could be the for the procedures now they are asking about the parameters as well so for the parameters we may write it down that uh, if you're going to pass the values to the main program to a procedure so they could be quite beneficial in a particular manner that uh, they could be reused the values can be changed the procedure will act similar for different values or for the different data so in this particular manner you may write it down okay now for the procedure first of all allows to create making program short and effective or efficient short and efficient and changes and you may say and so not changes you may write it down with modular means that uh, for example this is your main program so we have created the procedure over here one procedure one function you can make so these are different modules if you are going to remove this function so that won't affect with this procedure that won't affect with the main program as well okay so this is known as the modular program uh, okay short and efficient and without repetition without repetition of code whereas parameters will allow the procedure to execute in similar manner but different values okay now coming towards question number nine what is the question number nine says it's a logic gate statement now what does it say consider the logic expression z equals to a and b or not b's or c okay do remember that this not is applied over the entire b's or c do remember that draw a logic circuit for the logic expression each logic gate must have a maximum of two inputs do not simplify the logic expression. So A NAND B, first of all, we are with this bracket right now. So first of all, with the A, is going to NAND with B. Okay, now it is going into the OR gate. Okay, the other input for the OR is coming from this entire bracket. So first of all, solving the inner bracket, that is B's OR C. So we can take the value for the B from here, right over here. We can take the value for the C from here. It's a ZOR. Okay, now over the ZOR, we have applied the NOT gate. So it's a NOT over here, and that is going to merge with OR right over here. So this is how we need to do this one. Okay, now they are saying complete the truth table for the given logic expression. Okay, now for this expression, you actually need to write it down. So how you can write it down? So 
So A and B could be applied with A and B could be applied with P. Or we can, I can directly write it over here. With P, B or C could be applied with Q. Not over this entire could be applied with Q bar. And P or Q bar, P or Q bar could be equivalent to, uh, could, is equivalent to Z or Z. Okay. Now, first of all, finding out the value for B and B. So the line, okay, first of all, we need to, sorry, I missed one point. First of all, we need to name the variables over here. So this will be P, this will be Q. And just after the Q, we do have a Q bar and then we do have a Z. Okay, now for the P. That was A and B. So what is the value of A and B? So for 0, 0, the NAND gate says that output will be high. That means output will be 1. Sorry, NAND gate says output will be 0 if all of the inputs are high. So that means only at 1, 1, it will be a 0. Otherwise, it will be a 1 for the entire thing. So 0, 0 will be a 1. Again, 0, 0 will be a 1. Right now, we are going to check over the A and B. 0, 1, again 1, 0, 1 will be a 1, 1, 0 will be a 1, 1, 0 will be a 1, 1, 1 will be a 0, 1, 1 will be a 0. Now coming towards the Q. So what was Q assigned to? Q was assigned to B, Zor, C. So B, this time B and Zor, C. So we need to have a look over the B and C. Zor says dissimilar, if the inputs are dissimilar, the output will be 1. So for 0, 0, it's a similar, so it's a 0. Then 0, 1, it's a 1, 1, 0, it's a 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, it's a 0. Q bar is the reward of the Q. So if the input is 0, the output will be 1, obviously. 1, double 0, then double 1s, double zeros, and then finally a 1. Now coming towards the Z. So Z was the end gate between P and Q bar. So checking for the P, checking for the Q bar, and applying an end gate over here. So 1, 1, it will be a 1. And then one one it will be a 1. Then for 1, 0, was it an OR gate or an AD gate? Oh, it was an OR gate. Sorry, my bad. Yeah, sorry, my bad. OR gate. OR gate says, that output will be 1 if any of the input is 1. Sorry, my bad. I just wrote an AND gate over there by mistake. 1, 1, it will be a 1. 1, 0, it will be a 1. For 1, 0, again, it will be a 1. 1, 1 will be a 1. 1, 1 will be a 1. Again, 1, 0 will be a 1. Now, this time it's a 0, 0, it will be a 0. And finally, 0, 1 will be a 1. So, this is how we need to do this one. Q bar, my dear, Q bar is something. We have applied the Q bar to B or C not. So it was something like that. Not. And for the not B or C. So we applied B. Sorry. We applied Q to the B or C. And it was given the not as well. So we applied a not get over. So it was Q bar. Q bar means that it's a revert of the Q. So Q was actually B or C right over here. And for the Q bar it was not. Yeah, it's a reverse. It's the reverse. Is this clear, uh, Rafe? Rafe, is this clear with the Q bar? Okay, thank you so much. Now coming towards question number 10, it's regarding the databases. Okay, now the database called horses. Do remember the name of the database. Horses. Store details about the horses kept at a horse, horse sanitary. Now we do have multiple fields over here, code, breed, breed origin, gender, age, arrived. So there are six uh, fields right over here and we do have multiple, uh, we do have multiple records over here. That means the rows over here as well. Okay. Now what does the question say? State the number of the records in the database table. Okay. Now how many of them are there? So records starting from this one, one. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. So 18 are over here. 
So we are going to write it down. State the number of the records in the database table 18. Okay, please guys make sure for that. Do not please count the number of the rows with their quotes provided because they are not in a proper sequence or they are not in a proper manner. One of my students did this thing. So that's the reason I'm telling you guys. Okay. Okay. Now they are saying give the name of the field that is most suitable for the primary key. Okay. So the definition of the primary key, it should be unique. So breed is not unique. Breed origin is not unique. Gender cannot be unique. Age cannot be unique. Arrived can also be not unique except for the code. Code could be unique. So that could be the reason that it's a primary field. So code and reason it is a unique simply it is a unique okay just after that they are saying the database only allows the database uh, data types boolean character date time integer real and text complete the uh, table to show the most appropriate data type for each field each data type must be different okay sometimes we instead of the integer we do utilize a number in the databases but at this moment, they have given you the word integer. So you won't be utilizing or you are not allowed at this time to utilize the integer right over here. You can, oh, sorry, number right over here. You are only allowed to use the integer. Okay, now for the breed, gender, age, and arrived. Breed, gender, age, and arrived. So breed is a text. Gender is Boolean. Age is an integer and arrived is date. Okay, breed was text. Gender is Boolean. Why it is Boolean? Because it was either having a male or it was either having a female. Age was given in the number. So it is integer right over here. And arrived was given with the date. So you may say date time in the similar manner as it is written over here. Now we are coming towards the SQL language. Structured query language. No, that won't be a character. That won't be a character because they have given you either of the choices, male or female. That's the reason we are taking it in the Boolean. Okay, now structured query language to return the code and the breed. Return means you need to output the code and the breed. Of what type of the horses? Of all the horses whose breed, whose breed uh, originated in Scotland. Okay, we do have a question first of all that what is the real real means that with the point values for, uh, mostly in the databases for the currency we do utilize either a currency or either a real or you may say if there are any point values given over there so you will be utilizing a real okay now coming back to the part d complete the structured query language we need to output the code and the breed and the selection criteria okay of what of all the horses and the selection criteria is breed originated in scotland Okay, so return. Return means that you need to display. Display means you need to select. So we are going to write it down. Select code breed from the name of the uh, database. Okay, so what was the name of the database? It was horses right over here. So we are going to write it down horses from horses. And then finally we do have where, so we are going to write it down in where the breed originated in Scotland. So we can write it down breed origin equals to Scotland. So that was all for the second session of this past paper. Inshallah, we will be continuing with the next session of this past paper. Thank you so much. Allah Hafiz.